Yo, it's Easter, April 9th, but nobody cares about that shit. Who really celebrates it? It's your boy Blue Man, the Doom Wizard. Your guy. Let's rapid fire through some news. Human memory may be unreliable after just a few seconds, scientists find. Uh oh. Short term memory illusions can happen when we start filling in based on our expectations, study suggests. All right, I'm going to zoom through these. From squabbling over who booked a disaster holiday to different recollections of a glorious wedding events, you know, they're misremembered. So they're studying this, and they call it phenomenon have called short-term memory illusions. Even at the shortest term, our memory might not be fully reliable, particularly when we have strong expectations about how the world should be. When our memory starts fading even a little bit after after one and a half seconds, two seconds, and three seconds, then we start filling in based on our expectations. I see this all too often, which is why I try to remain as clear-minded as possible because I don't want to make mistakes like this. We thought we would they were more likely to be a memory effect, so you saw it correctly. But as soon as you commit it to memory, stuff starts going wrong. And first participants were screened to ensure they were able to comp complete basic visual memory tasks before presented with a circle of six or eight letters, two, one or two of which were mirror image forms. After a matter of seconds, the participants were shown a second circle of letters. They were instructed to ignore this action. This acted as a distraction. They were then asked to select from a series of options a target shape that had a particular location in the first circle and rate their confidence. So from 23 participants who reported high confidence in their answers revealed the most common mistake was selecting the mirror, mirrored form of the target shape. However, this occurred more when the target shape itself was a mirrored letter. Indeed, participants said they had seen a real letter 37% of the cases when they had been shown a mirrored letter compared to 11% of the cases cases for the reverse scenario. So the bias suggests that mistakes were driven by participants' knowledge in the alphabet and hence their expectations rather than just the similarities of the appearance of shapes. Imagine this is going on all the time with every aspect of our life, right? Guys and gals. Number of errors rose as the delay, delay period or level of distraction the experiment increased. So it indicates uh, how participants perceive the shapes but in short-term memory given the perception itself should not deteriorate over time. The added high confidence with participants reported their answers also rules out the possibility of result. The results are simply down to participants guessing. So their findings were confirmed by the results of three similar experiments, 348 participants. So we just make shit up in our head. Okay, moving on. We may be looking at the end of capitalism. Finally, maybe one of the world's oldest and largest investment banks warns greedflation has gone too far albert edwards an economist at the 159 year old bank general says corporate greed may be call for the unthinkable price controls when costs go up so do profits that's how capitalism that's not how capitalism is supposed to work but that is the recent trend for over a year now consumers and businesses both in the u.s and worldwide have struggled with inflation Soaring costs have prevented, haven't prevented corporations record profits. Last year's fi Fortune 500 companies alone generated an all-time high of $1.8 trillion in profit and $16.1 trillion in revenue. Greedflation. Work harder, slave. You're just a bitch-ass slave. Accept cookies? Okay. A light waves squeeze through slits in time. A mirror that rapidly turns on and off alters the waveform of a reflected laser pulse in a way characteristic of Thomas Young's classic double slit experiment. So we once proved this before with uh, time, I mean place, light can uh, bounce around and go through slits and create this little optical illusion. But now we can also, when the rapid switching of a mirror, just one femtosecond, one quadrillionth of a second, shows that certain materials can change their optical properties much faster than previously thought. So this could be build new devices handling information f using light rather than electronic impulses, ones and zeros. Quantum physicist at Imperial College of London shot an infrared laser of a, at a surface made of layers of gold and glass with a thin coating of indinium tin oxide, a material common in smartphone screens. So under normal conditions, ITO is transparent to infrared or light, but researchers were able to make the material reflective using a second laser, which excited electrons in the material, affecting its optical properties. This could be done with pulses from the second laser that lasted around 200 femtoseconds. So the experiment basically 
new ways of creating time crystals, which are mind-bending structures that repeat periodically, not in space as an ordinary crystals do, but in time. They can also build quantum computers, all right? So we're playing with light. All the physics we study is about waves, so we can easily apply the same concept to different domains. This can bring out more ap applications, including novel antennas, uh-oh, for 6G. It might give us brain cancer, uh-oh, watch out. But you didn't know this. Tigers have personalities, big cats. There's just a few hundred of these let, left Siberian tigers. And yeah, you know, cat owners will say, yeah, they have personalities. Well, the study of 248 Siberian tigers observed through a personality test showed that the endangered cats had a unique influencing both their success, reproduction, and survival. They're very individual, and they see their individual personalities. Okay, questionnaire of 70 personality indicators were filled out by the veterinarians and feeders who work with the tigers on a daily basis. And they found both tiger populations displayed characteristics that fell into two overarching personality characteristics, majesty and steadiness. Tigers who score higher on majesty were healthier, preyed on more on live animals, and ate and mated more. I score high on majesty. They were also registered by their human raiders as having a higher group status among tigers. Tigers, I don't know about that. But being collaborative and gentler also had its evolution. Steady tigers were more shown to be more gentler, more sincere, and more loving. Such traits may play a role in unusual length of time, two to three years, that cubs remain with their mothers. So they found very few sex-related differences. So males and females can exhibit the majesty or steadiness. However, the father figures have also been observed taking part in raising their young. It's pleasant to see that you don't have to be a dominant, fierce, and competitive aggressive in order to succeed as a, as a tiger, except that's exactly what you got to be to succeed as a human. What a shitty world. This is, there is evidence that it does, in fact, improve animal welfare and conservation. Okay. There's only uh, 500 remaining Siberian tigers. We could do less with bottom feeders and more tigers. These protruding T-Rex teeth, they had, they, there was lips. They, they were covered by lips, okay? Did you know that? Jurassic Park, Park toy makers, you know, everywhere. Animals like T-Rex had some sort of lip, like a soft tissue covering their mouth. All right? All right, moving on. Unselfish, uh, these are loosely organized into... Weird science, cool science, climate, and no war today. Unselfish traits, because it's Jesus Day. Unselfish traits and social decisions make pattern characterized by six populations of real-world extraordinary altruists. So, the conclusion is that these findings suggest that theories regarding self-focused motivations for altruism, self-enhancing re reciprocity, Reputation enhancement alone are insufficient to explain acts of real-world self-sacrifice. We show that features that best distinguish altruists from controls are traits and decision-making patterns indicating unusually high valuation of others' outcomes. Yep. High honesty, humility. Yep. Reduced social discounting and reduced personal distress. I agree. If you are out to look for others, you honestly probably have a high honest to hu humility ratio, um, reduce d discounting social environments or people, and reduce personal distress. You don't really stress out that much. Okay, not really a surprising study, but cool we we're able to quantify that. However, we're also learning that threat is associated with gut microbiota composition study finds. So, a study using the Pavlovian threat and extinction conditioning reporting that gut microbiota composition was associated with how quickly a person learned threat reactions in the scope of procedure, but not with how quickly the threat reaction was extinguished. Published in PNAS Nexus. So learning about threats is important, but it's gut microbiota has been shown to modulate anxiety-like behaviors in rodents, but also learning that depends on the hippocampus and amygdala regions of the brain. In experiments, rodents treated with probiotics showed better memory and decreased anxiety-like behaviors compared to untreated rodents and rodents without gut microbiota. In humans, the ability to learn about threats is, ness is known to be related to anxiety, given the findings about relationship between anxiety and gut, gut microbiota and rodents. So they want to explore whether your stomach, you know, the composition interacts with your brain 
and your perception of senses and threats, and it sure does, so keep a healthy gut, okay? But we also assembled the pathogen tree of life. So, a new online tool, first of its time for plant pathogens, helps researchers across, across the globe identify, detect, and monitor species of Pythothora, which has been responsible for plant disease ranging from devastating 1840s Irish potato famine to sudden oak that plagued death that plagues the west coast so, so you can do this tree of life you can go in and learn about the 192 formally described species and all these other things and things stuff and things and learn about you know update plant disease information in real time pretty cool maybe useful right somebody did the hard work of using a program here to programming language 3d maps visualize the stark population density differences in the United States. Uh, obsolete over there in Illinois. You could see everybody up there. Population estimates are bucking into 400 meter, about one fourth mile hexagons. All right. So this guy did New York. Yep. Everybody's there. New York City. Wisconsin. Alabama. New Jersey. What a shithole. Along with Florida. All these people are going to be gone. Pennsylvania. Texas. That's Dallas, Fort Worth. That's where I'm from. The Doom Wizard. That's Austin. Texas. Houston. Uh... Arts Houston down there. I'm tripping. Corpus Christi and all that shit. And if you go out here, it's really beautiful. Mar uh, Big Bend National Park. It's all desert out here and plateaus. Okay. Texas. It's an awful state. Awful governor. Moving on. Uncharted levels. Gas is fueling climate change. It's alarming at an alarming rate. Snooze. This is published two days ago. Yep. Missions keep going up. Keep going up, you know, but carbon dioxide is good for the planet. It helps plants grow, even though they're all flooded and in drought. We don't live... Okay, whatever. Coal capacity climbs worldwide despite promises to slash it. See, we can't even... We don't get it together. We cannot get it together. Coal just keeps going up. The coal fleet grew by 19.5 gigawatts last year, enough to light up around 15 million homes with nearly all new commissioned coal products in China. At 1% increase comes at a time when the world needs to retire its coal fleets, but we won't. Uh, in the future. Okay. For the future. It doesn't exist. I'm so... I'm glad this is over. This decade. I'm just enjoying this last decade. Hawaii and Alaska are showing effects of climate change. We see that. The wolf is in the house right now. It's a metaphor used by... Evoked by a panel of U U.S. government representatives on the final day of the 20th Pacific Risk Management Ohana conference in Honolulu. But there's case for optimism. No, there isn't. No optimism. It's trash. It's not just wildlife. Uh, oil and gas drill investments inc uh, continue worldwide. That's blocked, but that was the headline. Phase out of coal plants far too slow. Okay, just repeating the same thing. We need to stop building new plants and close existing ones at almost five times the current rate to meet the Paris Agreement goals. But, you know, 200,000 Babies are born each day from literal monsters. This is completely unrelated to everything else. I just thought it was some ridiculous piece of news that we spend $4.9 billion on a stupid video game like this. They also make uh, Scrabble Go while people are playing Farmville and uh, second warmest March ever before the arrival of El Nino. This is everywhere. It's a block, but you guys know. Uh, then Ohio researchers use federal grant to find environmentally friendly uses for coal. STFU, 2 million, million federal grant to study ways to take coal and develop environmentally friendly uses for it. Can be lithium ion batteries, power lines, filaments for 3D printers. Everybody hates coal, blah. Okay, it's been. A, I'm a theoretical physicist. This dude drabbled. I don't know. Okay, but guess what? We're a heat generating civilization, so it takes energy to make all this shit. Okay? Gone for good. California's beetle killed 
carbon storing pine forests may not come back. These pine forests in Sierra Nevada wiped out with pine beetles during the 2012-2015 drought. Huge forests stored to forests store huge amounts of carbon. So when the beetle killed off millions of trees, that carbon dioxide goes back in the atmosphere. But we'll study coal to make more power lines. Okay, guys, and batteries. Okay. And last but not least, this is for some reason all over the headlines because because we're that myopic because we're just a dumb dumb little ape. Right, sports ball adding 50 homers a year in MLB study says it's not that complicated. All right, global warming is juicing home runs. It's basic physics. When air heats up, molecules move faster and away from each other, making the air less dense. Baseballs will launch off a bat go further through the air, thinner air because there's less resistance and slow the ball. And just a little bit of further farther can mean difference between a homer and a flyout. All right, great. Sports ball is getting more entertaining because the world is warming. Uh, these clueless morons. All right, here. Dumb, dumb morons. All right. This has been your uh, rapid news roundup. A bit cynical today. Realistic because this is the sort, sort of shit I'm reading. You know? Yay, sports ball. All right. Hope you enjoyed it. You're a little bit smarter. I'll talk to you later. See ya.